Merci Virginie. Merci. Thank you to all the participants. I'll speak in English. I have a very rare privilege that I am Mauritian, but my mother comes from Guyana. She's a historian from Guyana. So I can tell you both sides of the uh, both sides of the spectrum. Bonjour to Ashitosh Kumar, to Francoise Lejeune, Judith Mishra, to Stephanie, to uh, PCMA. I read your book, quite a classic. I've quoted it quite, quite a number of times. And Virginie is a great friend of mine. We spent uh, many months last year. Unfortunately, with the COVID, vraiment sena chagrinant, I could have been with Ashitosh in India in July and with you guys in France. We were in Portugal with Ashitosh a year ago, and it was a very nice thing. Um, uh, given the conversations, I think I have to divert a bit. I think um, uh, with Judith, I think you should read Abhimanyu Anat. I don't know if you know him. He wrote Lal Pasina, three volumes. Lal Pasina, his words on the unknown immigrant is inscribed on the Apravasi Ghat uh, list. There's also Richard Allen. He has written quite a bit on... Uh, and if you look at our website as well, Apravasi Ghat uh, Trust Fund on the Google, we just updated our website. There's a lot of information on Mauritius. This uh, talk about uh, Kalapani, it has, I'm sorry, I have to divert. I just finished over the last two years looking at 50 volumes, 51 volumes in the MGI archives. Ashitosh knows this very well, and also um, Virginie knows it very well, how difficult it is to do research there. I just finished looking at it and uh, it changes my vantage point. I'll give you a few figures just to get you to think about, about what I'm talking about. We're talking about Kalapani. I can tell you that I looked at the sample from those 50 volumes, 110,000 Indians returned back to India. Just a few figures. You can hold hear me, right? Yes? Okay. Okay, 80,000 Indians took back 15 million rupees in gold in silver, 15 million rupees. And I can tell you two thirds of them paid their return passage back to India. This will be a paper that I'll be producing next year. This is the exclusive information I'm giving you. And out of which 15,000 went back to India and returned to Mauritius. One of my ancestors did that. Another 12 to 15,000, sorry, 15,000. Eh? Another 12 to 15,000 they were of Indian origin, they emigrated back to India. And when I went to India twice, I met some of them. So Kalapani, what is it? Is it an Indian construct? It is a colonial construct? So we have to think about it when we think about Kalapani. And uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes because I've been, when uh, Judith did her presentation, it got me a lot of things uh, thinking. So um, when we think about it, India getting, getting involved. 1901, Mahatma Gandhi, just by accident, came to Mauritius. And in 1907, he sent Manila doctor. He spent five years there. Ashitosh will know this very well, probably Virginie. He spent five years, he, bring about, he brought about the liberation of the Indians in Mauritius. And interestingly enough, he will go back to Fiji. Ashitosh knows that very well. He'll, he'll, he'll start a newspaper there, the settler. Ashitosh will know that, the colonial settler, right? So um, Amit Mishra, a good friend of ours, Ashitosh knows him very well. He wrote a monograph which he never published. I don't know if he ever published it. There was an interest from Gandhi, Nehru, and others from Indian Labour Party, from the Indian National Congress, sorry, and uh, to get involved in India. I'm sorry to digress on this. It's just to mettre les, comment on dit? Mettre les, 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 les i sur les... les, les Les sorry. points sur les i. Les les points sur les i. Sorry, I'm more anglophile. I'm sorry, I'm not francophile, I'm more anglophile. So, um, I'll get back to my, my issues. Um, in Mauritius, in terms of the non-Indians who came, we had around 11,000 non-Indians. Why are they important? As I always tell, tell Virginie, I always tell Ashitosh and others, they got, they got on board 38 different ports of embarkation. If you have followed the research of uh, Richard Allen, Marina Carter, I produced my first book with Marina Carter, and then with Claire Anderson a few years later, it is that Mauritius was a hub. It was a hub for both the slave trade, for slavery, for indenture, and for free passengers. 
I do not subscribe with what uh, was called as marginal. I can't remember the name of the scholar. Probably Ashutosh will just remind me. The scholar who said that Mauritius and other colleges were marginal. It cannot be considered as marginal because from 1830 to 1930, we received 130,000 free passengers from 50 different countries. Just to give you an idea, I just finished digitalizing the, the archives of the Anglican Church in Mauritius. And when I finished digitalizing it, 50 volumes, I can tell you it is, we received people from 50 different countries coming to Mauritius. When Auguste Toussaint talks about marginalization, peripheral, I can't remember the name of the scholar. There's a scholar who talk, talked about the periphery, semi-periphery. I'm sorry, I'm a bit tired today. I had a lot of things to do. Of course, about periphery. We have to rethink about periphery. C'est quoi être peripheral? C'est quoi être marginal? We have to think about that Mauritius, if it was, if we see so many visitors, indentured laborers, slavery, the work of, uh, of Claire Anderson, the work of our friend who passed away um, uh, a, few, a few months ago, a Malagasy scholar, uh, Claire, uh, I can't remember his name, sorry. Uh, so how, how are we going to consider Mauritius if we received half a million? Right now, at the indentured labor route, we did a recounting. Richard Allen, in recent correspondence, he said 3.7 million, 40 countries, colonies, and territories. I've been in touch with many other scholars, and the number is now up to 5 million, 60 countries, colonies, and territories, non-Indians, Indians. At the end of the day, when we look at Mauritius, it is very much a, a, a small speck. When we say it is the great experiment, of course, it is the great experiment, but there were so many other countries, colonies, and territories that were marked by intelligent labor. Ashutosh Kumar recently gave an interview for us for 2nd of November, where he put a lot of highlight on, if we talk about Mauritius, there's no other place. I, I see one of your scholars will be talking about Indians from uh, Kenya. What many people don't know is that they think Punjab was, was not involved. In Mauritius, we received indentured laborers. I can tell you from my research, from looking at all, I gave Ashitosh a copy of all those photos. And I can tell you from Kashmir, from, from, uh, from Baluchistan, from Nepal, all those places. Mauritius is one of those rare territories that from all places from South Asia, we receive indentured laborers, even from the forest corners of India, from even some from Tibet. So, it is quite interesting that we received all these immigrants. I can tell you my, my mother, she's a descendant of indentured laborers. They came, she, she settled on a Suriname, Guyana border. And on the ship that came, her, when she did research, I still have to interview her, she's already 77, five brothers came. One of the brothers were brought, were born on St. Helena, on the way from St. Helena, as you may know, in the South Atlantic, from St. Helena coming all the way to Guyana. It was a, it was a, it was a, for Trinidad, uh, I'm sure Judith will know. It was a major crossing point. If you miss St. Helena, many of the immigrants, we know from, uh, from uh, Basil Lubok, there's a book I produced, where some immigrants died of hunger. It was a crossing point where one of her ancestors was born on that ship and came to Guyana and she was on the Quarantine River, Quarantine, which is on the border of Suriname. I went there twice and I can tell you, it is quite something. There were liberated Africans there, there were Portuguese there, Madeirans, Azorians. If we want to talk about indentured labor, we have to look at it. In my office, there's a picture that a friend of mine uh, sent from Portugal of Portuguese women working white women working on Hawaiian Island, the same latitude. They tell you it is the same, it is the same uh, uh, climate, working in the 1880s, 1870s as indentured laborers. Norwegians working, maybe you don't know this. So what is fascinating about indentured labor is that all these groups, they were indentured laborers from Norwegians to liberated Africans to Chinese, to Azorans, Madeirans, all these people from all over these 60 countries and territories. My mom told me that her best friend was a Portuguese. She always said, yes, her great grandmother came as a Portuguese to Guyana. So when we look at indentured labor, non-Indians, 
Alan always said, it is always endocentric, sinocentric. If we want to talk about these groups, Virginia knows this very well. She wrote her PhD thesis, which I have a copy, which I've read three times already. There is this non-Indians, okay? People in Madagascar, they don't want to talk about their, their slavery past. People in La Réunion, Virginie knows this very well. She has been there for a long, for a long time. And you know the prejudice in La Réunion, which even I have faced in recent times, so I'll tell you later on. But people, they, they don't want to recognize their past, that there were Africans, there were Indians, there was Chinese, even Vietnamese. When I went to the, to the archives in La Réunion, I didn't know there were Vietnamese until I, I met a, 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 a young man there. So if we talk about all of this, even people from Muscat, Oman, from Sri Lanka, from, 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 uh, from, uh, from Rangoon, Rangoon from, from Burma, I had to go and look up the, 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 the port of embarkation. So it gives us an insight into the diversity of indentured labor, slavery. If we want to talk about modern history, about the 10,000 people, these 3,000 Chinese who came to Mauritius, about the 2,600 liberated Africans who came, about the thousands, it's 1,500, I'm still tabulating it. I mean, it's not, a, it's, it's not easy. We have restricted access at the inland. I can tell you, we only get access two half days to do the research at the MGI archives. Virginie knows this very well with the people with a suspicious look when you're looking at some of these records. Ashitosh also knows this very well. So it's, it's about world history. It's about Mauritius, La France, and all these pla other places, the Caribbean being part of world history, that we are linked. These people who got on those ships, I can't get a fathom. I've retraced all my 18 ancestors from, from Mauritius and all my 16 ancestors from Guyana. I cannot imagine how they, get on, they got on board those ships, how they came to Mauritius, they started a new life. Most of them, they didn't return. I don't know of any of my ancestors from Guyana who returned to, to they came from Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh. When we look at the geographic distribution, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand from, from Bengal. I didn't know I had ancestors come from Bengali. I didn't even, I, I had Bengali blood in my, until I did the research. So it is, it is quite interesting to see this diaspora. And it forms part of what Northrop called this major movement, this major migration from 1800 to 1900, from the, the, the colonized world, the, to, to, from, this, from these established cultures to the colonized world. And I can tell you, Northrop's figure is outdated. C'est complètement démodé. 2.2 million, ça ne tient pas la route. C'est 4.97 million. Des 60 pays et territoires colonials qu'on parle. Si tu veux, je peux t'envoyer la liste. C'est tabulé, c'est vérifié par les experts. Alors, quand on parle de ces... De ces if I'll just talk back into English for those who don't understand. If we talk about indentured labor, it is a global experience. It is a world experience. I'm sorry if I deviated from my presentation, but there were many things that we had to address. If this project talks about world history, it is all the societies that were affected by indentured labor and slavery. It cannot be seen in compartmentalization. It is one complements other. Because when, when indentured labor was taken to the Americas, which I wrote a paper about, Galenson, there's a very famous book, it was abolished, slavery came in, when slavery was abolished, indentured labor. It is what we, what your famous analyst perspective calls list, uh, list, uh, long durée, long durée, which is current today. It is current today. How many minutes do I have left, uh, Francoise? Five minutes. Alors, c'est c'est un peu l'histoire durée que on peut parler en général. À Maurice, ce qu'on a, on a 10 000 immigrants, 31, 38 ports d'embarcation, de Sofala au Mozambique, de Muscat à Oman, au Rangoon, au Bermani et même Singapour. J'ai envoyé à Virginie mon papier entier, c'est full paper, c'est basé sur mon livre de 2017. Si tu veux, je peux t'envoyer le PDF. Alors, si on parle de l'histoire partagée, si on, et c'est que si tu visites à part Sika, tu, tu as déjà visité l'île Maurice, non Tu as déjà visité l'île Maurice à, moi, tu, à qui tu parles, à moi 
à toi, François. Non, je ne suis jamais allée. Je suis jamais allée de Maurice. Non. Alors, quand tu, euh, Virginie, elle est notre, un peu notre résidente experte. Elle est visitée deux fois. Judith Mishra, I don't know if she visited. Ashitosh has visited twice, come twice. Tu vas découvrir que, tu vas découvrir que l'histoire de la Pravasigat, c'est que tous les Mauriciens peuvent découvrir les histoires, soit d'origine créole, d'origine d'origine chinoise, c'est que tout le monde peut découvrir l'histoire à la Pravasigat. Ce n'est pas exclusif, c'est un stéréotype pour a à l'île Maurice. Les, les Malbars, les Indiens, c'est pour les hindous, non. Il y avait des hindous, il y avait des chrétiens, il y avait des bouddhistes qui ont passé à travers ce site. Et c'est ça qu'on qu met l'emphase. We put emphasis on this. It is a World Heritage Site, the only one. There are 1100 sites listed on UNESCO. Peut-être que tu es au courant que le, le monde est inscrit. Le monde est inscrit. Bien sûr, on va dire que les Maurice, on, je vais dire les, les, les étrangers, je vais dire, mais tu es Maurice. Tu ne saurais pas qu'on écrit le tome mauricien, le tome qui ouais, l'histoire c'est unique. Non. C'est que ce n'est pas sur Generis Latin. Ce n'est pas seulement. C'est aussi que tous les, tous les îles de Seychelles, de Guadeloupe, de. Écoute, je suis allé huit ans, mon, mon père était ambassadeur aux Amériques, au, 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 à New York. Je parlais le créole avec mon, ami, mon bon ami de Guadeloupe. Ça montre exactement que la colonisation a porté ses fruits, qu'on on parle. Avec mon père, je parle pigeon English. Alors, ça, ça, ça montre vraiment qu'il y a un partage des cultures. La colonisation n'était pas quelque chose de néfaste. Il y avait des partages des cultures, OK on ne va pas aller avec le, 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 le truc de Macron que oui, c'était la mission civilisatrice ou de, de, de Gaulle, etc. Mais il y avait des aspects intéressants que we spread our culture to other people. OK? So, so uh, sorry about that. So, uh, je vais terminer ici que at the end of the day, it is common history, common heritage. Si demain, vous allez venir, if tomorrow you'll come to Aprovacigat or Mauritius, I hope post-COVID, Espérons que tu vas découvrir que l'île Maurice, c'est un pays à cause de ça. Virginie aime venir à l'île Maurice, c'est la région. C'est une culture très, très ouverte. Et même mon, mon head of technical, Corinne Forest, le Corinne Forest, qui est d'origine française, un de mes bons amis. Pourquoi elle a, elle a voulu venir à l'île Maurice Elle est aussi un Mauritian citizen. C'est que ces îles ils offrent à, à, à des étrangers aux Mauriciens vraiment de découvrir une un, un histoire partagée et une culture partagée que même à, en France je me sens à, à, chez moi qu'on a, on a cette culture qu'on peut partager avec nos enfants